Hi friends, today's video topic is heaven. Many people want to know about heaven and just as many want to go there, but what is heaven? Well, let's take a look at nine facts about heaven and maybe an extra tidbit or two sprinkled in. Let's get started. Fact number one, heaven is God's dwelling place. Think about the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Fact number two, heaven is a place where Christ is today. After Jesus was resurrected, he was taken away up into heaven. Fact number three, heaven is a place where Christians will go when they die. When the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he commented that he was torn. He was torn by living on the earth, which was his home and the only home he knew, and departing the earth and going to his heavenly hope to be with Jesus, which he considered far better, being with Jesus in heaven. Heaven is where Jesus is preparing a place for us. He said in his Father's house are many mansions. Number five, heaven is a place where we're commanded to set our affections. We are to seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Heaven is also a place where our treasure is to be stored. Jesus told the young rich ruler who wanted to know how to have eternal life, to sell what he had and give to the poor so that he could have treasure stored in heaven and to come follow him. But he walked away sad because he just was not willing to do that. Fact number seven is it's a place of our true citizenship. Number eight is it's the place of our inheritance that does not fade away. And number nine, it's the place of our long awaited hope. Well, here's a tidbit. You may have been wondering why I didn't mention that heaven has streets paved with gold. Well, Revelation 21 speaks of streets that are paved with gold, but it doesn't say that they're in heaven. It speaks of a city that came out of heaven because the old earth and the old heaven had passed away. The city is called the New Jerusalem and it has specific dimensions. I found online that the base of this city, according to ancient Greek measurement, was the equivalent of 1.9 million square miles or 4.9 million square kilometers. It's massive. Anyway, this is where those who follow Christ will spend eternity in the New Jerusalem, not in heaven. And the New Jerusalem has the streets paved with gold and it has gates that are made of pearls. One gate is one pearl. So it's just absolutely beyond comprehension. So the question is, how does one get to heaven? Because many people feel they're going there, but maybe they don't understand the criteria. Because, see, getting to heaven doesn't necessarily depend upon what we do. Heaven is God's dwelling place. And we, as humans, we inherited sin from Adam. Sin is not when we do something wrong. It's in us. It's something that we inherited and sin cannot enter into the presence of a holy God. So God fixed this for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who was sinless. He left his throne. He came to earth and he shed his precious blood. The famous scripture, John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall have everlasting life. You see, Jesus came to earth to identify with us as humans. He was fully human, but he did so without being tainted by sin. You see, before Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to pay for our sins, Animal sacrifices were required to just cover our sins until Messiah would come. Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was raised from the dead, therefore conquering death so that we may have eternal life. When he was raised from the dead, he defeated the consequences of sin. One thing that Christ had exclaimed while on the cross was, it is finished. 
This phrase was commonly written across debts at that time to cancel them out. It basically meant that the debt was paid in full. You see, Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but through me. There is salvation in no one else. There's no name under heaven by which you must be saved. You see, because Jesus paid the price of our sin on the cross, forgiveness is freely given to those of us who put our faith and trust in Jesus. And there's no righteous deed that we could ever do that can earn us a place in heaven. Many people believe they're going to heaven because they're good people, but being good is not good enough because we come to Christ empty-handed. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says it plainly, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If there was something that we could do to earn our place in heaven, then there would be no need for Jesus to come to earth and be tortured. He was tortured. The scripture says he didn't even look like a man. He didn't even look like a human. They whipped him. And at the edges of the whip was pieces of bone that would lodge in the skin. And when they pulled the whip back, it just ripped his flesh off. They pulled his beard out of his face. So if we could do anything to earn our salvation, why did he have to endure what he did? It's about what he did for us, not what we could ever do for him. It's a gift. It cannot be earned by us, we cannot work for it, or we cannot achieve it. It's dependent solely on Christ's generous work for us on the cross. So seek Jesus today, pray for forgiveness of your sins, claim him as your Lord and Savior, and he will save you, and you will have your place in heaven. Honestly, scripture doesn't say much about what it looks like. All we know is that it's where God dwells. So it must be so amazing that we can't even comprehend it. I hope you've learned something today about heaven. I hope this video has helped you. Please like and subscribe to my videos. Click the bell to be notified when I do post a new video. And I hope you have a great day.